Next clip, next clip to talk about. Let's talk about Kill Tony. So there was this lady that came on Kill Tony recently called Stephanie Robertson. She's been tearing up the Reddit. I've not watched it yet, so I'm going to watch it live with you. You're going to get my fresh, real reaction, and I'm sure you might enjoy it too. She's from the episode with Tim Dillon, and allegedly this woman was kind of legendary, but I think for the wrong reason. So we're going to see this woman perform, and we're going to see what she's about, and we're going to enjoy this together, okay? Um, it's, it's the episode with Tim Dillon. So the one I watched recently with that guy that was clearly on Coke, episode number 639. So it's a girl called Stephanie, what's her name? Stephanie Robertson. So we're going to watch Stephanie Robertson on this show. And then we're going to fucking continue. You feel me? Cool. Um, let's get her up on here. Bear with me a second. She's at 1 minute 29. 1 minute 29. Cool. Let's go here. Let's end it there. And let's play her. And let's see what Stephanie Robertson from Kill Tony, episode number 639, starring Tim Dillon is saying, okay? Let's see what she's saying. Let's see what she's saying. Unmute it. Got Merry yeah. Christmas, <laughs> Mom. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? You could be a parking attendant in the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> well... Uh, Nick James, uh, you've been on this show before. You got a little joke book? I did. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there he goes. Nick James, everybody. I got another one, right? We're flying through tonight. We're going to get another one up here. Another I love the band. I'm not going to lie. The original band was obviously a vibe, but I love the band. That's such a good idea for these shows. The band is so cool. Another chance. The Bucket of Destiny has spoken. Make some noise for Stephanie Robertson, everybody. Stephanie Robertson. So we make our smooth descent. Thank you. Yeah. How is everybody? This is Thanksgiving. Oh, you guys are honest. Good. That's nice. Yeah, mine suck too. <laughs> my parents pulled out the baby photos. You know how they do against your will. And I was looking through my nursery album of my twin brother and I, and I realized my mom themed our nursery after Noah's Ark. I like this part because I can tell who's read the Bible. <laughs> you godless sons of bitches, what the fuck? Yeah, well, apparently my mom didn't know either. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but in the story, God floods the earth because of sinners like you. And he, he tells Noah to put these animals on a ship. I don't know if you guys know this, but those animals aren't a ship because oh, they're family. No. She's talking fast now, she's nervous. Yeah, they're there to fuck each other. Oh, that's yeah, Brendan. And so I was like, Brendan. Mom, what were you thinking putting my twin Brendan brother and I that? in a crib under these pretenses? Did I run out of time? Oh, no. It's a zero. I don't know. Oh, what am I looking? no. Am I so sorry. Oh, fuck me, you oh, guys. Oh, okay. no. Just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, talk. There was nothing that was good that was going to happen anyway. Oh, nothing no. happened. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, bro. Bless her. Oh my god, that was brutal. Oh my fucking god. Look at the black guy's face. <laughs> Look at the black guy's face in the back. Oh my god. I swear to god, I've never seen cricket. I've never heard cricket. Exactly, Fashion Road Man. I've never heard crickets like that. They gave her nothing. Oh, sorry. The fucking... The oil is running into my eyes because I've been sweating now. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm blind. I'm legally blind. Oh, shit. Um, I've never seen the Kill Tony crowd react to someone like that. What do you think happened there? Do you think they felt her energy? What, what do you think happened? The crowd immediately didn't like her. Was it her haircut? Was it her jacket? What happened there? Do you think the crowd were, were able to vibe... That she's a bit of a dickhead or something. Like, what happened? They gave her zero. She didn't even say a word. And they instantly just like clammed up. <sighs> I still don't get the point of the, of the, of the Noah's Ark. Like what's, what's, the, what's the joke there? My mum built a nursery and, and made it after the Noah's Ark. What was that about? I didn't get why that. What, what kind of joke? What? <sighs> 
I feel so, anyway. Let's watch the end of it. I can't. I feel so bad for him, man. Fuck. During yeah. the 60 seconds, that said zero the whole was... time, which is how many punchlines you have. Focus, yeah, I know. I fucked that up. I don't, I had never done a, I've never practiced a one minute. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been on stand up? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Oh my God. She's two years in and she's that shit. Okay, now you see, this is what I mean. Now I get, look, 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 look. Now I understand why Brendan's the way he is. I swear to God, I understand it. Every time I watch Kill Tony, I understand why Brendan's got these delusions of grandeur. I get it, man. Most stand-ups are fucking terrible. This girl is young. She looks, she sounds intelligent. She looks well-adjusted. And she's been doing stand-up for two years. And this is what she has to show for it. Two years. And she can't do a minute of jokes. Now I get why. <laughs> what? Asad. Gringo Mammy. <laughs> Gringo Mammy is fucking crazy. Now I get why. Honestly, I get why Brendan is the way he is. Most stand-ups are fucking terrible. If you're Brendan and you're at the fucking Laugh Factory somewhere and this girl goes ahead of you, you think you're better than her. Yeah, I, I, this girl's fucking shit. Let me go cross this shit. And then we flopped each other. Ah! He was like, I was like, she was like, and then I was like, no wonder he fucking kills. Uh, in Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. You're just visiting us? Yes. Red Bar. Red Bar. Where are you, Red Bar? She's in your fucking state, man. Where are you, Red Bar? Chicago? Come on, man. You should be whipping her into fucking shape. She's terrible. The, oh, what's Red Bar's co-host? The lady. What's her name? She's funnier than her. Much funnier. And you can't even see her face. Yes, I am. This is my first day here. First day here? Or second day, yeah. Second yeah. day. A day and okay, a half. How's yeah, the big, big up Jules. I'm going so far. I'm um, pretty good up until this, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so a minute and nothing in a minute. Do you, how many minutes does it take for you to get to something? <laughs> that's a great, yeah, that's a fair question. Um, Couple maybe? Sure, well. I know this sounds like I'm, I'm being a bit of a boy. Is there like a running thing with like Tony being extra nice to girls and shit on this show? Does he always try and fuck or something? What's happening here? Am I getting that vibe? Or am I reading too much into this interaction? Because she did fucking horribly. She has no business doing stuff. She needs to go back to working at Carhartt or wherever she was working before. Why is he being so nice to her? Because this is the time for some brutal home truths. Like, hey, you're a young girl. You're not ugly. You should not be wasting time doing something that clearly isn't bringing you anything. You should be going out there, working, hustling, working your fucking tail off, making a career for yourself or, you know, having a family. Whatever your fucking goals and dreams are, you should be chasing that. You shouldn't be doing this. These are the times that someone used to have like a hard conversation. We all need to have them, right? Everyone's had those conversations before with people sometimes. Like, this girl has no business being on stage. Two years. This is what you have to show for it. Huh. But I get a feeling Tony wants to fuck. Well, I don't know. How long was that out for? Goddamn. That was a minute. When you said, is that a minute? It was about it was 57 exactly a minute. seconds. Okay. And then the cat came in. Yeah. The clock was rolling. Yeah. You want to keep going with the Noah's Ark thing? Yeah. What, does it, does it, is it, like, what's, how does it wrap? Does it just, okay. was the joke just yeah. 40 more days and nights exactly? Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, good. No, so I tell my mom, I was like, mom, what were you thinking? Put my, is this ridiculous to do? No, 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 <laughs> This no. feels a little fucked up. They're Better like, than fucking... bombing for a minute. All right, all save right, yourself. Right. She's trying to save it by being self-deprecating, but she's not even good at that. Look, honestly, that's why you should never blame the crowd because the crowd knows, isn't it? The crowd knows, isn't it? The crowd read her like an, from an instant she walked out and they were anti her from the minute she walked. She didn't even touch, she didn't even say a single word and the crowd of like, no thanks. 
That's why comedians who say, oh, the crowd was a bit shit tonight. The crowd wasn't really like, nah, it was you, brother. They smelt you from a while away. They don't like you. Comedy crowds know what I'll go on. Even when they're drunk and they're high, they know. Like, nah, not for me. But this is still proof that most stand-ups are shit. This is still proof. If she's going on fucking... Because I'm sure... I bet you if you go on her Instagram, you'll see her performing in places. I bet you she's performing this weekend. I bet you if, the, if, if you find this girl's Instagram, she's got flyers on her Instagram where she's performing at legit comedy clubs this weekend. She gets paid to do stand-up. This woman gets paid. And she's that terrible. God damn. All right. All right. Um, I'm giving you a chance. You are, Tony. God bless. Uh, okay, I... <laughs> all right. So I was like, Mom, what were you thinking putting my twin brother and I in a crib under those pretenses, you know? And she was like, no, no. Those animals come in two. One boy and one girl. Like you and your brother. And I was like, Mom, those animals come in to each other. Like, I don't know... How you missed that part in the Bible. It's one of the easier reads, you know? Oh, my like, God. I think your mother's right, because no one thinks about the animals fucking. But oh, that's exactly my that's right. God. Oh, my God. It got worse. How did it get worse? Oh, my God. Woman. What was that? And then they fuck each other. Like, what? You and your brother, what's, so what is this? It's like, it's like a Noah's Ark incest joke or something. No, that's okay, mom. Me and my, me and my brother are going to fuck each other anyway. We'll make all the animals. Like, what? What the fuck was that? <laughs> I can fix her, John. <laughs> I can fix her. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. Oh. Fuck, man. They were on the ship. They yeah. were on the, they were on the ship to make more babies once they got off the ship. Yeah, but the story is kind of She's arguing. Nah, she's arguing. She's arguing about this fucking terrible joke. She's arguing. She is arguing. But you guys just don't understand. You're godless creatures. Where my Christians at? Woohoo! Put your hands in the air if you love the Lord. No, your joke is shit, hun. Sorry, whatever the reason. I don't know why, but people just don't like you for some reason. I wouldn't know, honestly. I wouldn't. That's a that's a side I did. I never really fully appreciate until today. The crowd. That's an element of stand-up people don't talk about enough. And you and your aura. Because this woman walked out and that crowd said no. I don't know why. I want to know why. <laughs> this, she walked out on the stage and the crowd said, uh -uh. that is amazing, bro. Wow. And she felt that. She felt the rejection from the crowd and then she quickly crumbled. But I guess if you're a good comedian, you can win them over. But she realized that they, did, they didn't like her. And she was like. Tend. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? No. So, yeah. Yeah, but on the ship. They were, yeah. on the, they were on the ship to make more babies once they got off the ship. Yeah, but the stories kind of pretend. <laughs> ah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, so, real. People, yeah. Yeah, no one. No one. Catholics believe it. It's the just Catholics a cute, it's kind of like it. a cute thing to do. The Catholics believe it. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's just a little too soon for your Noah's Ark jokes. You know what I mean? I do have a 9-11 joke too. Can we do hear it, your 9-11 yeah. jokes? Do it, do it. I don't know if you know. I like how she doesn't get that they're laughing at her, not with her. But let's hear. Let's hear the 9-11 joke. Let's hear her 9-11 joke. We already heard her trying to make a joke out of the Noah's, trying to make the fact that she, what, slept in the same room as her brother and relate that to the Noah's Ark. And that went crazy. Let's hear her try to make 
a joke of 9-11, which I, in my opinion, I think 9-11 jokes are easy to do. They're easy, right? Nowadays, especially if they're kind of conspiracy laced, it's easy to get a couple of laughs at 9-11 jokes. Let's hear her attempt a 9-11 joke. I'm curious. Come on, girl. Oh, where you showed up tonight, but this is probably yeah. more of a 9-11 How crowd. How did you not choose the 9-11 joke? I'll warn you, this one's longer, but it it's is better. Longer? It's, it's better. longer? It's better. How can it possibly it's, it's, be longer? I got Okay, well, I'm okay. going to tell you what. Hey, let's it. do it. Let's have a fun little experiment because this comes it. up. Hold on. This yeah. comes up a lot in Kill Tony, which is yeah. make everything shorter. Shorter is better. It's, yeah. It, nothing needs to be long. I'm going to okay. take note of Go your ahead. joke, and then I'm going to tell you what parts you can edit out afterwards. I this is okay. a new fun Great. segment called... Fix this unbearable shit. <laughs> Thank you. Here we okay. go. With her 9-11 okay. joke that she chose not to do, but instead a Noah's Ark joke deep into an episode of Kill Tony. Here is the 9-11 joke that she should have done that is somehow longer than the Noah's Ark joke, which is longer than a minute. Let's see how it goes. Here she is, Stephanie Robertson. Thank you. I, uh, I, I do miss growing up with my brother, though. I'm 26 now, so that means we grew up in the Osama bin Laden's hiding era. You guys remember that? Kind of miss it, right? I don't know. I do. I kind of miss it. I don't know. <laughs> I miss the mystery, you know. <laughs> I miss the chase. <laughs> I miss making my brother cry after telling him, Osama's hiding in our basement. Run! <laughs> you know, because you didn't know where he was, you know? <laughs> he could have been anywhere, right? And then my brother would cry in school because he was scared to go home to Osama, you know? <laughs> And then, uh, and then, you know what happens when you cry in school, right? Kids call you, you gay. But my brother came out as gay in high school. That, there was a te that's, that's a callback to the first joke. Um, and <laughs> it is. I didn't get to finish. Well, okay. It's not. I didn't oh get to tell that part. I know. God. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Well, this joke isn't about 9-11. No, it is. It is. It is. Hold on. You're, you're, okay. All right. Okay. So you cry in school, and then, and then luckily my brother came out as gay in high school, you know? <laughs> so that was cool for him, except for it made my mom cry a lot. And I was like, wow, Steven. I was like, you were, uh, you were in hiding. <laughs> you were gay. Oh, fuck me, you guys. I, all right, all right, all right. I was like, oh my God, what a humiliation, you know? Uh How can you be humiliated and still smug at the same time? Thank you to whoever said that in the chat. How can you be humili- How can you be this much of a car crash how can you be this horrible but still still have an element of smugness about you how how is that possible how can you think you're smarter than the audience that you're funnier than the audience when you can't make them laugh how i wish i had this personality i wish i had this kind of personality where i was able to just think i'm amazing despite all the signals that were coming at me telling me you're shit you're a dickhead you're shit you're a dickhead you're a loser you, you're not funny you're shit you're a dickhead you're shit you're a dickhead you got a weird face look at your stupid fucking hair your stupid nails you're a dickhead you're a dickhead i wish i could be steadfast like i'm amazing i'm the next but how is she smiling uh no this is good oh my god <laughs> No, it's fine. Finish it. You want it. me to keep going? Okay. God damn it. All right. Okay. So uh, he cried. He, he was gay in school. Uh, it made my mom cry a lot. I'm trying. To, <laughs> he made my mom cry a lot. You know, or it made my mom cry a lot. She was crying like it was 9-11. I was or, <laughs> Oh, my God. I didn't like that she was crying. I didn't like that she was crying. I didn't like she was so upset that my brother oh was my gay. Oh, my God. And so. He was gay. He was crying. He was, was like, gay. Maybe I should fuck with her and tell her I'm gay, too, you know? Because my brother and I are twins. <laughs> Like the towers. Oh my god! <laughs> Boom! Stay with me! Stay Boom. with me, please! And no. I just love the idea of being like, being like, Mom, I'm gay too. And then she'd be like, oh, they got the second one, you know? <laughs> Hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> no. I'm gonna let you go forever. No. Oh, oh, I yeah, know. And I was like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> call my dad watching gay porn. We call him the Pentagon because no one saw that coming. You know what I mean? 
Oh. <laughs> what? Wow, 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 wow. This is why, this is why I say, in my opinion, I can never understand if you are out there listening to the sound of my voice. If you have imposter syndrome, please stop. If you have any form of self-doubt, please get rid of it. I could not understand how you can have those emotions when there's people like this in the world who exist, who somehow get through life with every signal coming at them, telling them they're fucking shit at what they do, yet they think they're fucking Dave Chappelle. You should have no sense of imposter syndrome, no sense of self-doubt. You should always fucking believe in yourself because this motherfucker has no reason to believe in themselves, but they do. What right does she have to have this confidence? She has no right to have this confidence. She's fucking terrible. Go back to working at fucking, I don't know, Benson and fucking Edges or whatever marketing agency you were at before. Do that first, please. Usually, marketing companies are like one word, like protein, whatever. Go and work at some ad agency. Go work at an account somewhere, at a studio, a coffee shop, whatever. But this is terrible. Oh my God. And it's not a crime to be bad at what you do. It's the fucking attitude, man. It's the fucking attitude. Look, she's smug. She's resting her hand on the fucking, on the mic stand. She's basically acting as if she's like one of them. Hey, I'm a comedian too. <laughs> nah, man, you're not one of the boys. You're not, one, you're not in the gang, man. You stay over there. I don't want none of your unfunny juice coming over here, man. Sorry, you stay over there. I don't even want to touch you, bro. I don't want to get none of your fucking contagious, unfunny shit. You stay over there. Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. Brendan is like George fucking Carlton, as he says, compared to, him, compared to her. J Brendan is fucking George fucking Carlton compared to this fucking woman. God almighty, bro. All right. Some people just genuinely surprised out there at that part. Not not a laugh at all, but some of the words you could edit out in that are all of them. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly every single one. That's exactly what I have oh, yeah. here. Brought to you by Stay With Me. Yeah. I mean, that was absolutely incredible. My notes on editing are everything. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a 9-11 joke because we will never forget this moment. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. incredible. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. When you leave... You, you hear when that? You, you hear that? You hear that? With your fucking silly first lady haircut? I just... Even her fucking face. Her jacket doesn't match her haircut. Why she look like she's from fucking Mad Men, but she's got a jacket from last year? Why? Why doesn't it match? Why? Read all of the names in the audience. <laughs> this, this is his risky business up here on Kill TV. Anything can happen. Some people are made stars. Some people have a rough first outing. Yeah. What's great about this show, and I say it all the time, is that sometimes uh, people, their first time on the show, come out and have, you know, what know. you consider. We just, yeah, I showed up to Chicago and put my name in the bucket, and then I was like, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, you, well, you, you saw, so. Wait, what? <laughs> Where you well, I don't have a minute, Chicago? yeah. And just threw my name in the bucket. I haven't practiced for a minute, you know what I mean? Right, well, yeah. you know. Does she, honestly, what, this woman is fucking, redacted and i want to say the s word so bad right now i want to say the b word so badly right now but she's a fucking silly cow isn't she what a fucking silly cow it's not the practicing of the minute you're not fucking funny you dipshit you're not fucking funny that's the problem you might make fucking dan on his little fixed gear bike with his little fucking stencil tattoos on his legs 
and he's rolling his little cigarette outside a coffee shop, you might make Dan chuckle, but you get on stage and guess what? Crickets. You might make me chuckle a little bit by drawing a fucking penis on my coffee. Cool, that's funny. Ha ha, look, there's a dick in your coffee. But when you get on stage, it's cracking crickets. With your fucking Dorothy fucking Perkins haircut. Cut it all off and donate it as a fucking wig. That's how you contribute back to the fucking society. Dumb cow. Again, this is another big thing. I don't thing. think it's the minute. Right. Another big thing that we talk right. about. Like, if you go see Tim right, or me yeah. or yeah. whatever in our big shows, our first second. joke, yeah. it does not... How have you gone through that entire thing and you're still like, yeah, yeah, I get it, yeah. No, you don't get it. You don't get it. You're on stage. You don't obviously get it. How can you go through that whole stage like, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was an age. Well, yeah, yeah. Well. Maybe your brother should have fucked you when you were kids. Maybe it knock some sense in you. Take a minute to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's on ba 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 Boom. And then it starts. And then you ride the wave of momentum, of laughter. Mm -hmm. There's not like a, you can't, there is no, just going to take two minutes. Just no, well, you're right. stick with That's me, fair. everybody. Stay That's with fair. me. Doesn't really get... work in the big we'll leagues. Be, we, uh, yeah. You also feel I an just angry cut. at the audience. Huh? You also feel like, t like tonally you're angry at the crowd. You're like, stay with me, you know? Right. Yeah. But uh, that must exist, isn't it? That must exist in stand-up, right? That must exist. That might explain a lot of the, the stand-ups in general, isn't it? They always, like, I've always said they have this contempt for the audience. Which is odd because they kind of, the audience are the reason why you guys make money. The reason why you go on tour, they pay for your lifestyle. You know what I mean? But I always get that there's some comedians that actually have contempt for their audience. It's almost as if like, how dare you not laugh at my really smart joke? Like, this is, like, I work, because I, I don't doubt, this is the thing, she's not funny, right? She's not funny. But I don't doubt that this woman spent a lot of time thinking of this joke. She spent a lot of time thinking of like, how clever it sounded in her head. Okay, I grew up in a Christian household, um, Noah's Ark. If if people if people are quiet, I can call them godless. If they laugh, I can say, yeah, you get it. You know, she she thought of this joke. She actually can. I can believe that she wrote this joke down. It's actually a proper bit. I can believe that. But it's not. It's. It doesn't matter how long you work on a joke. One year, two years, one minute. If it's not funny, it's not funny. And the crowd is always right. But I think some comedians. And I'm not just sure if it's like a. If it's like a societal. If it's not society, If it's like a. How you? I don't know what it is, but I get this. Some of them do have this kind of like because Tim didn't mention it. It's almost like a contempt for the crowd. You don't get it. You guys don't get it, man. I'm way too. You don't get it. You don't get it. It's like no, we get it. We get it. Please make us laugh. Like, and also maybe it's a bad day. Maybe you. Maybe you are funny. Maybe she actually is funny, and she's a bit zooted. She had a joint. She had a fucking pill. She's on her reds. There's all reasons why she's a bit off. Maybe she actually is funny. But this attitude isn't going to help when you're like, nah, it's the crowd. They just, they just don't get it. And it's the minute. Nah, it's the minute. You know how minutes work? It's like from zero seconds to 60 seconds. Yeah, it's like that minute stuff doesn't really work for me. I usually work within like, you know, hours and no love. Like a bit of humility, please. And this is also proof. You remember remember the other day we were talking about, oh, life humbling you. There's some people in life that don't get humbled, you know. I just rigged it. I just clocked this right now. Listen to this. Think about this now. Remember how the other day we were saying that life humbles you. There are some people that are wired so weird, no matter what happens, it doesn't humble them. <laughs> They're like Teflon. There is no humbling. It's like, what is this? No, you just don't get it. It's like, what? That's like... That's like Super Saiyan narcissism. That is Super Saiyan narcissism at, you know, in full effect. The world is sending you humbling signals and you're like, nope. La 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 la. <laughs> yeah, I'm something, all right. I, uh... Do you love stand-up? Do you uh, love doing this? Does it make no, you feel good? Um, I do. <laughs> make you feel good. <laughs> I do. Uh, what do you do, do for a living? 
Um, I worked at a venue, um, an entertainment venue up, up north in Illinois. Okay, is it yeah. a comedy venue? No, it's like all arts. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. We got it. She's a hipster. No wonder she's a fucking hipster. She had to come down from her ivory tower and entertain us low life down here. She's a fucking hipster. I knew someone said it in the stream chat. Whoever said it, it's the hipster thing. Exactly, that smug. There we go. We've all seen it. It's the hipster thing. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> but I don't know. Even Fashion Roadman can attest to this. Fashion Roadman can attest. To this. I don't know if it's different in America, but our hipsters in the UK, they are as insufferable as her. But usually they're only this insufferable and smug and obnoxious because they've achieved something. Like they've done something. I've got my own store. I've got my own brand. I'm a stylist. I'm a photographer. They don't just have that smugness just because they exist. I don't know. Maybe hipsters have changed. But the hipsters that I knew grow growing up and being in a the scene, they had hipster. They had that smugness and that entitlement and that kind of attitude because they got gassed. Because they got all these, you know, people are sucking off in the industry. Whereas this woman is like, I don't know, what have you done? You're not even funny. How are you this smug when you're not funny? I don't know. If hipsters are, I don't, maybe hipsters in the world are all the same. But the, the London hipsters are, have this attitude. They're probably even worse than her. But they usually have that smugness because they've done something. But this woman's done, like, what have you done, bro? You're not even funny. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Fashion, exactly. Like, 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 got the little studio, their little art practice, their agency, and then they're smug. Then they have this attitude like they, you know, like they fucking walk on water. But come on, lady, man. You know, you know what she kind of reminds me of? You know that, you know your friend's girlfriend that you don't like? But you, but you never tell your friend. <laughs> you know you got that one friend has a girlfriend that you don't like, but you never tell him. You just keep it to yourself. Like. <laughs> She's like that. <laughs> she reminds you of that. I don't know why. There's that one friend that's got a girlfriend that you don't like, but you never mention it. You just keep it to yourself, but you don't like her. And she knows you don't like her as well. <laughs> She's got that kind of vibe. There's something about... You know? Oh, wow. Koyla says, in the US, they're smug when they have a degree. Imagine getting, imagine being smug because you have a fucking diploma that's not worth anything. A diploma you can't even fucking use as a fucking, you know, as a fucking coaster for your fucking drinks. Jeez. Imagine having a, 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 a smug. Yeah. Oh, Koyla, that explains it. I bet you she went to a good university, though. <laughs> I, yeah, there you go. Koyla fucking sussed it. I bet you she either went to a good university or she's a part of like a very cool collective somewhere where she's from. I bet you. If you find this girl, after we finish, I'm going to try to find her Instagram. I bet you she's a bit of a big deal in her little scene. I bet you she's a big deal in her scene. She's like a big fish in a small pond. I bet you. I almost am sure of it. Big Austin Casey. Tony gives advice on doing stand-up, but I've never heard his stand-up. Does he have a special? Is he funny at all? Other than this show, what does he do? Please let me know. Hmm. You know what? That's something that's interesting. Also, because no one, no one actually... It's the same could be said for Rogan. Rogan acts like he's the oracle. He acts like he knows everything. Like he, you should listen to his wisdom. But he's not funny. I don't know about you, but if I was trying to be a stand-up comedian, I would want to listen to people who are funny. People who maybe match my style that I'm trying to aim for or people who I just find funny. But if people I don't find funny who are successful, I don't care what you think about stand-up, really, because I don't rate your stand-up. But for some reason, he has this place of authority. No, not some reason. Because he's got the biggest fucking podcast, the biggest platform in the world. But the Tony Hinchcliffe thing is the same thing. I think it's the association with Rogan that gives him authority and kind of um I'm gonna say authority but yeah it kind of maybe the same happens with, maybe the same happens with Brendan too innit 
Maybe that's why people still go to Brendan's show because of that association with Rogan. Just being associated with Rogan is good enough where people think, okay, he's Rogan's friend. That must mean he's funny. But then to be fair again, no, to be fair, what's, to be fair, thinking about it out loud, I don't think it's fair to say that about Tony Hinchcliffe because this show is kind of like a comedy showcase and somebody has to play the role of that, the judge and the jury type of thing. That's a fair thing. I think it's fairly fine. Um, I, and, you know, yeah, I think that's okay. In Tony Hinchcliffe's respect, I think this is fine on this platform to have this thing of like, okay, cool, you guys are amateurs, you're learning, you're trying to get in the industry, cool. But, Because what can she say? She can't tell Tony you're not funny because he'll say, yeah, but we know you're not either. You know, there's nothing you can... At the end of the day, like, you can't talk to me if I'm Tony if you're her because you're fucking terrible. So it doesn't matter how unfunny you think I am, I'm fucking killing on here, sitting down, and you're obviously not killing. And you want to fucking lie down probably. So, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, what do you do there? Um, I, I book shows. Okay. What yeah. do you do for fun? Um, I, I go outside. <laughs> Uche. Uche, he's a legend. I went on a date with a dude and said, I'm glad my hipster face is long gone. And he said, what's wrong with being a hipster? <laughs> oh. Oh. He's like, what? Huh? <laughs> As he rolls up, he's honestly those fucking cunts with their fucking roll up cigarettes. Ah, oh, I wanted to fucking shove their head into a fucking wall so badly, man. I fucking hated them. Honestly, man, fucking cunts with their little fucking bicycle hats, like swinging their little flat asses in the air. Fuck off, you prick. And I, I like. <laughs> I like nature. <laughs> I like I like swimming. I like the lake. Uh huh. Yeah. Who cares at this point, right? Slow no run. Cue <laughs> slow run. No, I'm the host. You're right. I get to decide oh. when this ends sure, for you. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I'm like, it's a real. It's a real power play. You know oh, what I mean? She's taking, yeah. that I oh, Tony wants to fuck. She's taking off the jacket too. She's lifting up her arms. Because the car jacket is a bit of a boxy cut, even though it's patchwork. That car jacket looks expensive too, by the way. That car hard jacket looks like, you know, Pastor Roadman will know that. That looks like warehouse. That that looks like work in progress. That looks like car hard whip. That jacket is not cheap, but it's boxy. So she's lifting it up so T Tony can see the hips, and then she's taking it off, you know, so so you can see the fucking tatas, eh? The fucking tatas, the melons, eh? The melons, the narangas, eh? You want my narangas, Tony? Tony Inch Clip, you want my narangas? My hipster narangas? <laughs> I really built for myself. I'm just trying to find a redeeming quality about you, something that'll make the people, you know, something you get. We find a special, maybe you have a special skill or a talent a you could show skill. us. <laughs> Have oh, you ever seen the show before? I absolutely okay, have. Okay, yeah. so you kind of know. What... I just didn't expect uh, this uh, to be even be on it. <laughs> right. You see that this is that's narcissism, isn't it? You see how she disassociated there. She said, "I didn't expect this," but she didn't say, "I didn't expect how bad it was." You know, she didn't even, yeah. I think she's a she's a covert narcissist, as I like to say in YouTube land now. This is a narcissist, isn't it? I didn't expect this. What do you mean this? You mean how bad you were? Can you say that, please? Can you just, like, admit that it was terrible? I didn't expect this. You know, I can't really work within a minute. I need to more... It's like, sister. 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 Gordo. Chica. Mujeres. <laughs> right. yeah, Why would you not so expect special. to be on it if you signed up for it? We hear this all the time. Uh, um, you're right. I I guess so. 
Just, you know, luck of the no draw. Mass, no mass! No You can't win if you don't oh my. play. You also right. can't lose if you don't. Yeah, that's cool. Isn't it, she, has, she has like a weird face, isn't it? Like... <laughs> <laughs> she, I don't know what's going on here. <gasps> play. You played. Am I playing? You're playing. Yeah, Tony wants to fuck. You want to play with my dick? You play? You want to play with my pee pee? Tony wants to fuck for real. Tony wants to fuck. <laughs> NJ Ranger saying, yeah, <laughs> NJ Ranger saying he's standing on business. He wants to fuck. I'm standing on business. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. In the chat, in the chat, in the chat. One, you want to fuck? Two, she's mid. Let me see in the fucking chat. What you got? What are you horny fuck saying? One, you want one? She one, she want to fuck or two? She's mid. Ones or twos? <laughs> I saw three. Carlos, three. <laughs> okay, one, one and two, one and two. See, oh, you see, this is how she gets people. This is how she gets people. She's got something about it. She's got some. She, she's got a little bit of magic about her, isn't it? She got a little bit of magic in her. She reminds the people in school that talk too much and think they're enlightening, but everyone thinks that they're tapped. Exactly, exactly. She definitely loves the sound of her, vo her own voice. But again, I don't. I got sympathy for her because I feel like she must be a big deal where she's from. You know, it's it's like as much as I think it's unearned. Yeah, as much as I think it's as much as I think her confidence is unearned, I bet you in her scene she's a big deal. So I, I get, but because we don't know her, you know, it is what it is. But I bet you in her scene she's a big deal. You know, that's that's a part of me that's like a little bit. I can under, I can get with because there's no other way like she's just this smug and this confident when she's terrible at like what she does and she doesn't have in. It's not even the funny thing. Even the conversation's a bit like, you know what I mean? Like what go on, man? Like, have some banter, laugh at yourself. Like you could have a shit set, but then just have this fun be this thing be fun. But she's coming across very unlikable. That's a problem with her. This is it. This is your chance. So, like, of all the you're making kill me Tonys, yeah, I'm Ooh. making you what? You're making me sweat. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thanks, Tony. Ew. This is what this is what people sign that up for. Tony There's sweat. a who said ew. She's on the fuck. Who said ooh? Someone said ooh. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thanks, Tony. Ew. This is what? This is... <laughs> They're flirting. They're flirting. They're definitely flirting. <laughs> it's very clunky. It's very odd. But they're definitely flirting. Look at Tony. Look, look at Tim's face. <laughs> He's disgusted. This is what people sign up for. Tony There's sweat. a chance, There's of course, like you see it all the time. Like, whoa, this person signed up and their life changed. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, they're making, they're just selling out on the road. Yeah. And then there's the, the risk, I've seen it, Tony. the risk reward. I know. The show could be called Risk Reward. Let's yeah. change it. It could be called that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not. It's not, it's Kill Tony. It's not. It's called Kill. Kill. And then the guy who decides how much longer you're up here all for. Right. <laughs> jacket off now. Hello. Oh, here we think she's gonna play a uh, song. The little avocados come out, eh? There you go, eh? You want some of my pico de gallo, eh? <laughs> there she goes. There she goes. Get those little French tits out, girl. There she goes. A eh? couple of fried eggs. Let's go, sunny side up. Come on, Tony, sucking them. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look, who's she looking at? That? Who's she looking at? That? <laughs> hey, Tony, I know I wasn't that funny today, but I got a couple of narangas on my chest that could do with a good squeeze. So, why don't you put down that microphone, conceal your homosexuality for just one hour? And fuck me. <laughs> a little bit longer, like your setups. You say, <laughs> okay, that's Tony. Enough. Only 
hear what that's I That's enough. Want Red band, that's enough. Tony, um... It's Lisa Loeb. Is that then the advice that you wrote down on that paper, among all the other things, is <laughs> no, to cut it up? There was a lot. It? You don't need the when you were alive. You don't need the Osama hiding. You don't need the brother in the basement. You could do a brother in the closet joke there, though. You could punch that up. And then right. he was, came out as gay in high school, went down like the two towers. I already had that about 30 seconds right. before you said it, yeah. that your brother went down like the two towers. Oh. That's where I thought you were I going. Went, but then yeah. you made it about you as well. You made you. You see? Didn't I tell you it should have been an incest thing? Even though that sounds fucking crazy, didn't I say, if you're going to do the whole fucking Twin Towers, me and my brother sleeping in the same fucking cot thing, you might as well just turn it into an incest thing. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Naughty America, you know? You might as well do some shit like that, bro. Fuck it. Fuck it. Just go that, go that way. You and your brother, the two towers. But it was more of a what if I came out as gay, but no one thinks you're gay. You yeah. seem like a straight woman that doesn't get dicked down. I thought, she was gonna, I thought he was going to do worse than that. I thought he was going to say, you look like a straight woman who calls herself queer so you can appear more interesting. That's what I thought he was going to say. I thought he was going to say, you look like a straight woman that cosplays as queer so you can appear more interesting. That would have been harsher. But he went with that dick down thing. Guess what? To open the door for him to dick her down. Bring her down to bring her up. Guess what we call that cast iron pan? Yep, you guessed it. Negging. Negging masterclass at fucking work. Negging masterclass at work. Bring her down. Tell her what she needs. And then offer it to her on a plate. She takes off the fucking silver cover. And guess what's in there? You guessed it. You're strong. There you go, honey. Dinner is served. There. Dinner is served. Oh no, did that come out? Sometimes my thoughts come out. Do you have a love life? Is there someone? Yeah. There's someone in yeah. Chicago? Just yeah. is it a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> just a cold little carrot. Ooh. Okay. To be fair, her her even though she's not admitting she did badly, her body and her face is showing it. She's really uncomfortable. Her mouth is really dry. You know, she's moving up. She's like, her mouth is dry. She's feeling incredibly, incredibly insecure. Incredibly insecure right now. She probably wants to just let the ground open up and just dive in. And she's hating every minute of this. So even though she's acting smug and smiling, inside she's crying. Big up, NJ Ranger. Frankly, I'm depressed and ashamed. Tony <laughs> Soprano. <laughs> exactly. Big up, NJ Ranger. We got the Sopranos too. Oh, fuck it. Every time I think of the Sopranos, I think of fucking Brendan saying it's an overrated series. He couldn't get into it. It's like, bro, you watch 90 Day Fiance. It's not that good. Overrated. It's like. Okay. Okay. But yeah. Well played by Tony, but she looks, she looks like she's having a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, Chili Bear. She finally realized that they aren't laughing. They're, they're not laughing with her. Yep. Also, um, great way to stand up for your boyfriend, right? Huh? He says you're not getting dicked down enough, and you're like, <laughs> you dick me down, then. You dick me down. <laughs> Just a cold little carrot. <laughs> Say. Okay, stop, Red Band. Somehow the Lisa Loeb is the most insulting thing about all of this. Um, what does your boyfriend do? Uh, no, I don't have a boyfriend, but I do get dicked down. You so, do? Oh, yeah. You do? So you, yeah. have a, you have a hook up there? Yeah. Okay, so what is that? When that happens, how does yeah. that go down? You, like, should go to his place, he comes to your place, he kicks the cats out of the way, and, uh... <laughs> this is good negging, because she's smiling. She wants to get... She wants Tony to dick her down. She wants Tony to dick her down. This is, this is, this is good work, but... 
She's probably she's big up Chili Bay. He 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 cocked it. She's regretting. She's regretting going up on stage now. She's not liking this side. This this is this is her. This is you can see she's not liking this now. This is not fun. Two cats or one? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> okay. I um, actually, uh, dude, I was in a three-way for the first time. Uh, Blackout Wednesday, baby. Let's find out about that. Tell Two us cats? about that. That's compelling. That is the Noah's Ark of uh, storylines. Yeah. <laughs> We've come full circle. Um. Yeah. Blackout Wednesday. Okay. My best friend was in town. And then there was... Uh, she or he? She. Okay. And then my old hookup was in town. Mm -hmm. No one's dick's hard right now. No one. No one's dick's hard. No one, man. She's got the fucking sex appeal of Taylor Swift. I said it. You guys are hyping her up, man. She's got the fucking sex appeal of fucking Taylor Swift. And if you like, if you think, if you have thoughts of fucking Taylor Swift, you probably like touching kids. There, I said it. And big up Stinger Goo. I think she's turning Tony straight. <laughs> now, Tony will still fuck. Just for the fun of it. You know what? Tony probably still will fuck just to make sure people, just to keep people guessing about his sexuality. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Let's just let's just keep mix it up. That's what I would do if I was him. Fuck it. I'm fluid. You mean people say you're bisexual? No, I'm, I'm not even bi. I'm just fluid. I'm I'm me. I'm Tony. Why are you Tony? What way do you swing, Hinchcliffe? We got bored at a bar. <laughs> bored at a bar. What yeah. were you doing? Telling jokes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's a really um, lame tactic to get people back on board by talking about sex and shit, trying to offer your, you know? You know? What do you think? I think that's a bit of a lame tactic to try and get you back on side. Hey guys, I have loads of sex. I'm sexy, girl. Look, I have sexy. Me sexy. Look, people put their stuff in my hole. Ha <laughs> ha. It's like, come on, girl. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Please. Me so sexy. Oh, oh yeah, shit. Stephanie, Stephanie, yeah. I don't know what to do with you. I know, I know. I don't, know whether, it's to, upsetting, I, I don't know whether to fuck you or tell you to go home or bring you home with me. I don't know how Everyone to back at home is going to see this. Um, that's like, you know... That's the that's the that's the high Tim. Jesus Christ! You do this Tim. a lot. You do a lot of spots throughout the week. You work hard yeah. at this. Yeah, I do a lot of spots throughout. It just the week. didn't go good, but that doesn't mean anything. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm just in this one instance. It the most important. I watched this show. This is right. the most important instance as well, far as well, I'm let's concerned. Hope not. Well, let's no, not for me. God, you might no. want to skip next week's not episode. Not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking no, dude. Uh, yeah. But whatever. I mean, it's uh, it was a learning experience. Thanks so much, Tony. <laughs> well, it really should be, you know. Thanks so much, Tony. Yeah, they, she definitely gonna try and fuck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean what I said, you know. I mean, there's guys that write a brand new minute every single week on this show. You're it's right. an incredibly hard job. It's insane. And in those minutes, they have to have things that connect. Yeah. And when we go on the road and they do 15 minutes or 20 minutes or they're on their own for an hour, they're lining those things all up together. And those minutes become longer sets. Yeah. So you should have more opportunities for laughter in those minutes. Thanks, Tony. And when you're doing all those spots that you do, you have to apply what you learned here to those. You're devastated, but meanwhile, you don't really have the, the funny part. I know. <laughs> you you're can't have both. It can't, it's me. not like I'm it like, went God over damn, 400 know. people's heads in here or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could put your location on ExpressVPN as North Korea next Monday around 8 o'clock and you, will, you won't be able to see it. ExpressVPN.
Look at Red Band proving. Look at Red Band proving the theory that most stand ups are terrible. What the fuck was that, Red Band? What the fuck was that? You could, you, 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 you could, you, you could, you could put, you, you could put my, your number in my phone. This is, this is why stand up is terrible. We figured it out, people, together. It's not because of podcast. It's not because of money. It's not because of ads. It's not because of fame. It's not because of Joe Rogan. Pod, stand up comedy is f terrible. Guess why? Because most stand ups are shit. And think about it this way, people. Think about, think about it this way. Think about it this way. Think, think, think. You go to a comedy club. You're invited. Imagine you're invited. Imagine someone's like, hey, I got some tickets from fucking Groupon to go see a comedian after work. You don't want to go home back to your wife because you fucking hate her. You don't want to see your kids because you hate them. You're like, you know what? Why don't I waste a couple of hours in here drinking, chatting up some waitresses and I can go back home. Cool. You go and you sit down. You, as you're approaching the fucking comedy club, you see some fat tubbard lard like Red Band pull up to the comedy club in a Mercedes, in a BMW, on a nice motorbike. Wearing some cool clothes. You're like, oh, who's that then? You walk in, you sit down and that guy's on stage telling his jokes. But he's terrible. He's so bad, he's making you think as you're sitting down on stage thinking, hold on. If he's able to afford this crazy car, those nice clothes, I can do this too. So, in fact, because stand-up comedians are so shit in general, they encourage more people to do stand-up who probably shouldn't be doing stand-up. And that creates this over-bloated, over-crowded, super low barrier of entry fucking art form where the people who are the most famous or most well-known doesn't really relate to your funniness ability, to your to your level of humour or whatever it may be. Not most stand-up comedians who sell the most tickets are really funny. Most of them are fucking terrible. So it skews it. There is no meritocracy really. Nothing. It's all kind of fame and weird thing going on there. That's why stand up is shit. Stand up is shit because stand up is shit. Not because of podcasts, not because of sponsors, but because of those motherfuckers. And then guess what? If you're famous or if you have a cool friend like Rogan, if you're Brendan, you can have an entire career where most of the career everyone's pretends that they can't hear how terrible you are. There we go. We figured it out. Stand up comedy is terrible because of the stand up comedians. APN, yeah. official sponsor of Kill Tony. What an amazing <laughs> drop. Uh, are, so you're just visiting Austin, and then yeah. you go back to Chicago. Do you have any plans to come back to Austin? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, how about this? Because this was an incredible, incredible learning lesson for everybody, I do believe. Ooh. Why don't you come back in six months, and we'll give you a minute. We'll give you an automatic Whoa. minute. We'll say she had a tough set, a tough interview. You have six months. Got a bit of a bum in it. <laughs> Tony definitely wants to fuck. Tony definitely wants to fuck. Take off those little dickies, girl. Take off those little dickies. Let me see what that little fucking Chicago clam oysters be doing out there. Snap that shit, man. See what that fucking Chicago. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I don't think she deserved this. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think she deserved this. I think she deserved to just leave the way it ended. Just end, just leave it like that. So you have to figure it out on your own. This is also proof of what how the entertainment industry works because she's a pretty girl. If she was, if she looked like fucking Lizzo, they wouldn't have done this. That's the, you know, that's part of the problem too with stand up, because she's pretty. You know, like she, 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 to get the lesson through your head, she probably should have left that stage just unsure of life. Like, oh my God, should I continue doing this thing? Should I not? Blah, blah. But because she's pretty, they're like, come back in six months. Tony's going to see her before that six months is up. <laughs> you know how Hinchcliffe gets down. They don't call him Hinch for nothing. You get it? Hinch, Hinch. Bloody up. Hmm, anyway, I'll stop. Months to prepare. Sound cool? You'll get an automatic spot. Deal? Yes, of course. There you go. Thank we'll see you in six months. Stephanie Robertson, everybody. There's a little redemption there at the end. A shot of opportunity.
like six months. I'm not gonna lie though, she's incredibly annoying. As a personality, she's incredibly unlikable. Maybe that should be part of her pers that should be part of her comedy. Maybe she has she should have a, some sort of routine that kind of leans into it, but she's incredible like the kind of person that you would hate to work with. She's incredibly annoying. I think she's way smarter than what she is, way funnier, like looks down on you, like like the kind of person that looks down on you when you work at the same place. Have you seen this probably? You know what people are talking about? You work for the same company, but they look down on you. It's like, but you're here. It's like, how can you have a superiority complex when we're working for the same company? <laughs> you know, like she's so annoying. And I'm, I'm usually, I'm a personality guy. You know, because, you know, I'm a personality guy. It doesn't matter what you look like. If your personality is horrible, I'm out. That woman's personality stinks. Like, I'm out. Nothing to, like, and, you know, it doesn't really matter because I'm sure she doesn't, you know. I'm sure the only black person she listens to is probably Doja Cat or something. Do you know what I mean? She doesn't know any black people. So it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, not for me. Not for me in the slightest. I'm good. I'm good. She's ho she's horrendous. Like, hor horrible, horrible, horrible. Not for me. Not for me. Oh, yeah, exactly. Kendrick Lamar. Of course. Of course, Kendrick Lamar. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. That was fun, isn't it? That was fun. <laughs> anyway, smash the like button down below if you're enjoying the show. Smash the like button down below if you're enjoying the show. Don't be fucking stingy. There's also a link in the description, I think, for the Discord. If it's not working, let me know and I'll update it. But join our Discord. There's like 100 plus people in there, all fun, hanging out, talking shit, sharing links, razzing each other and all that good shit. Jump on board. It's not some Andrew Tate thing. You don't have to send me fucking $5 to join it. It's just a link down below. So join the Discord. If you don't want to join it, make sure you like it. Of course. Good. Thank you. Let's fucking go. Big up Austin Casey. What are you saying? Rogan emerged as a comedy gatekeeper. Tony saw that and wanted in on some of that action. Hmm. Hmm. Is that overly cynical or do you think Tony is like that? What do you think? Is that overly cynical or not? What do you, what do you guys think about Austin Casey's point there? Rogan's a comedy gatekeeper. Tony saw that and wanted in on some of that action. Hmm. Because I can, I can even admit myself, when I was doing parties, right? When I was doing raves, there was a there was a part of me, as much as I like to just do the party and be able to book myself, there is a part of you, it's, it's unavoidable. There is a part of you where you kind of enjoy being the the guy, you know? Even though it's like, even though you're putting on a party and you're booking people to play, so it's not just all about you, you enjoy the adoration and adulation of being the, Oh, this is Agatha's party. Yeah. Are you going to... Do you know what I mean? You enjoy that bit of it. And obviously, if you can if you can play a significant role in booking them, you, you enjoy, like, playing a part in their success a bit. It's a bit odd to say it out loud, but I think I've had... I had some of those thoughts when I was promoting and shit. So maybe Tony Hinchkiss has that too with Kill Tony. Maybe there's an element of that too. And maybe in comedy too, because comedy is so dumb, maybe there are some people who think if, like, a really big comedian pops off from Tony Hinchcliffe, Sorry, from Kill Tony. Maybe there's some people out there that think because Tony was because because they appeared on to Kill Tony, it must mean that Kill Tony's also that Tony Hinchcliffe himself is also funny. You know, they they try and make you know two plus two equal ten or something. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, pre band for logo says. I mean, Rogan says Rogan says jump and Tony says how high. True. Oh shit, I got bored. Okay, so oh Discord link. Thank you so much for that. Um Uche, you're amazing. Let me put that in there now. My my bad. I'll put it in the description right now. Thank you for updating me, friends. Baby one second, I put it out there. Oh my god, man. Damn. 
Now Uche, no fresh haircut. I just comb my hair. <laughs> I, I never, I never brush my hair or comb it out. I guess I'm trying to go. I was trying to go for the Lenny Kravitz look, but you know, <laughs> he got to kind of look like Lenny Kravitz first. It didn't work, so I just brushed it. <laughs> I thought I looked like Lenny Kravitz. It's like, nah, um, nigga, you look like a bum. Look like a bum, nigga. <laughs> so yeah I changed it I changed it for that you know the Lenny Kravitz thing didn't work so I changed it you feel me I changed it um, let me put the link in the description so you guys can see it bear me a second here uh, discord link discord link and then we'll continue ba 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 Nah, 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 nah. I don't have any. Nah, no. They're not. For, that's not for me, Carlos. Honestly, that's not for me. I'm a. I. I swear to God, I'm a personality person. That girl's personality is so not my cup of tea that it wouldn't matter what she looked like. To be fair, I'm not. I'm not on it. It's not for me. To be fair. And think of it, Tony Hinchcliffe's personality suits someone like that anyway. You know, he's kind of obnoxious and insufferable too. They're kind of quite similar. You know, think about it. Like, it makes sense. You know. It's not like, it's not that surprising if you heard something happen between them, you know? You wouldn't be that surprised. <laughs> 